NBA free agency, we talked about it a little bit in the first hour of the program. We had a news update from Adrian Wojnarowski that Kevin Durant has declined his $31.5 million option with the Golden State Warriors and laid out some of the parameters and options for KD. He's a busy man, and we do appreciate his time. Everybody who covers the NBA, especially somebody here in Los Angeles who covers the Los Angeles Lakers, not like it's an ever... It's never a slow day in Bill Orm's world. Bill Orm with The Athletic. He's covered the Lakers since 2013. He covers them on a day-in, day-out basis. The content never slows down, and we thank you for taking a couple of minutes to join us here on The Rich Eisen Show. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Well, appreciate it. What is your weekend looking like as you get set to think about everything to come on Sunday? I mean, every NBA yeah. reporter, I'm sure, has told family, okay, I'm probably going to be locked up pretty tight here over the next few days. You, you but would in think so. Land, this is pretty much your existence. I mean, you would think so, but my wife, um, fa- life doesn't stop. My wife scheduled family photos for Sunday morning. So what? I'm going to go from like family photos like cheese to <laughs> um, <laughs> to all of a sudden like uh, finding out what happens at 3 p.m. and checking my phone nonstop probably. But I mean, this is uh, this is a really, obviously, for obvious reasons, a heavily anticipated free agent period for the Lakers. And this has happened every summer going back to 2013 when Dwight Howard was a free agent. Almost every summer, they have found a way to create cap space and chase whoever the biggest guys on the market are. And they've been constantly rejected up until last summer when they got LeBron James. But you know, we've heard kind of this idea that LeBron... Uh, players don't necessarily want to come be LeBron's number two. Well, the Lakers took that off the board. They went and got LeBron's number two. So now the question is, can you lure one of those top guys to be LeBron's number three, the the three musketeers here, and try to restore something to the Lakers who have been, you know, really uh, a real black mark on the legacy of this franchise over the last six years? So, Bill, if we're thinking about what's to come on Sunday and what's to come thereafter, already the biggest move thus far has been the addition of Anthony Davis and the trade consummated and we can get into some of the particulars there because even that Mm -hmm. came with a little level of intrigue and controversy but are we talking about a summer here that is part of a plan a multi-year plan because this was one of the great talking points out of the lakers organization specifically for magic who did a lot of the talking and who still does a lot of the talking but you know magic had made it seem like well we never said we were going to get two in one off season we got lebron and now it's up to us to get one here in the summer of 2019, how much of what's to come here is sort of flying by the seat of their pants, and how much of this is an overarching plan from the Lakers organization? Well, the first step was obviously getting LeBron James, and and once once they once the Paul George thing happened last year, where Paul George, before free agency even began, re-upped, recommitted to Russell Westbrook and the Thunder. Um, they almost had to make it a multi-year plan because there wasn't a scenario where they could that where they could build a championship team around LeBron last year without without really um, tying themselves up and killing their flexibility. So they tried to they tried to kind of split the baby a little bit with, we're gonna get some veterans, but we're gonna get them on minimum deals. That's how you end up with, you know, JaVale McGee, Lance Stevenson, Rondo, Michael Beasley, who was a, you know, uh, did not contribute at all. Um, now the, the multi-year flexibility is is gone. You know, they, they basically wasted a year of LeBron's career. You have him at 35 going into th- his th- age 35 year. Um, this has to be an all in, summer there is no well if we don't get a guy this summer we'll push that cap space into into 2020 they have they know they have lebron james and anthony davis together for one year anthony davis is a free agent next summer now all expectations are that he is going to return that this is going to be a long-term marriage between anthony davis and the lakers this is where he wanted to be but we've seen this before we saw it with dwight howard we've seen how things can go sideways and we don't know what the lakers you know look like in this new Rob Palinka running the show era with a with a potentially diminishing LeBron James. So the Lakers need a lot of things to go right this year so they can feel comfortable that they're going to have Anthony Davis into the future. So this summer is is the ultimate test for the organization, but they absolutely have to emerge from this summer as as title contenders to make good on the trade they made for Anthony Davis because they mortgaged their entire future with the pieces and the assets they sent to New Orleans. So Magic Johnson very famously, and you were there at Staples Center when he resigned yeah. his position, unbeknownst to a lot of the power brokers in Los Angeles. What changes from last summer to this summer with Magic out? Well, I mean, frankly, you, you lose you lose that closer. I mean, there were a lot of things that Magic brought to the table that maybe weren't positive in terms of, you know, hubris or a lack of a, accountability or um, um, just being in the office. I mean, something we've heard a lot about him. But one thing you can't argue is that in, in terms of charisma and and being able to kind of sell the Lakers dream, nobody was ever better at that than Magic Johnson. And so 
him not being in the picture, presumably, I, I cannot imagine that he will be involved in any in any um, in any recruiting. Um, Does at he least know official, that? <laughs> I, I mean, I, he's out there. He's she's trying, but you lose kind of that person who can really kind of sell the mystique of the Lakers. Now, the Lakers, to some degree, sell themselves, and you have um, you have Jeannie Buss, who is a great ambassador for the Lakers as well. But I think what the Lakers are trying to sell this summer is is stability and credibility that, you know, the wild card of magic is, is, is no longer here. You have Rob Palinka, who, you know, is a, um, a savvy former agent would be there, would be their pitch. You have Kurt Rambis who has four decades of experience in the NBA and you have a great tradition come be a part of it. Um, but we don't know how free agents look at, at the Lakers. We just, LeBron is the only guy over the last six years who, who said, yes to this and he came when it was a completely blank slate and they've changed almost everything since he got here to fit more his timeline to fit to reflect his um where he is in his career and that you know was a big a big adjustment for the lakers and so does a guy like kemba walker want to be a part of that does jimmy butler want to be a part of that we just don't know yet and that's and that's what's i think the most interesting thing about this free agency period is how appealing are the Lakers now that they have this two-headed monster? We are speaking with Bill Orm of The Athletic. He covers the Los Angeles Lakers, has done so since 2013. You can follow Bill on Twitter, at Bill Orm. I'm Darren Smith. This is The Rich Eisen Show. Do the Lakers want Magic's help at this point? You know, you, you wrote a column where he spoke with you and he talked a little bit about D'Angelo Russell potentially returning, how much more mature he is, how much better he is. Also, the simple fact that none of the players who were in the locker room with D'Angelo first go around are still there, which I thought was an interesting detail because yeah. we always suspected that what went on with him and Nick Young was factored in, but we never, I never at least saw it in black and white. If you're the Lakers and you're Jeannie Buss and you're Rob Polinka, he's Magic Johnson, but do you want him out there campaigning and politicking on the Lakers' behalf? I, I don't think so because it, it, it adds to this idea that there's a dysfunction with the Lakers because Magic was calling the shots, but now he's not calling the shots, but he's still out there saying what the Lakers should do. It leads to questions about... Who's in charge in L.A.? There's already that question. Is it is it Kurt Rambis? Is it is it Jeannie Buss? Is it Rob Palinka? But if you still have magic, you know, in the peanut gallery, it <laughs> just it just adds to this confusion around the organization. I think you want to be lockstep, everybody rowing in the same direction, one vision. And magic might very well be, you know, sharing company secrets here with the D'Angelo Russell plan or some of the other free agents he mentioned to me. But if you're the Lakers, you don't want him to be the person who is putting a face on the direction of the franchise. He 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 gave back that baton. He passed on the opportunity to be that person for the organization. If I were Jeannie Buss, I'd say, you know, here's here's a hundred thousand bucks. Get on a cruise for a couple of weeks. You know, let this window of free agency open up. Magic, do us all a favor. You know, log off Twitter for a little while. I mean, again, and I feel. It feels weird saying that because I'll go magic, away for a hundred thousand bucks. Us, uh, a lot of us would. I don't know that magic would though. I mean, magic, magic turned down this this opportunity right. just so he can return to being Magic Johnson and his words. But I, I keep thinking to myself, you know, he's Magic Johnson. He's one of the most important, maybe the most important player in franchise history. Yet, if you're Genie Bus and Rob Palenka, you have to you have to cringe when you know that he's set up to do an interview or that he's speaking to Bill Orm of The Athletic because you just don't know what he's going to say and how it's going to be interpreted, especially after he went pretty hard after Rob Palink and some of the stuff he said. I mean, it just, I, I'd say, hey, Magic, here's an all-expense-paid cruise. Go to Europe for a couple of weeks. Come back. Let us figure this out. I mean, he's going to do that. That is his annual, <laughs> his, his annual summer routine is, is sailing around the Mediterranean uh, off the coast of Italy. So he will, he will be there. I don't think Jeannie needs to pay for it. Um, but you, but you're right. I mean, obviously, he is he is the, the unpredictability was always one of one of the issues with Magic. You go back to last summer entering the free agency period, they 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 had their draft, and he steps up and says, you know, we're going to get this done. Well, why? Because I'm Magic Johnson. Um, how are you going to do it? No answers. But it, then he says, if I don't do it, if I don't get a superstar in here, I will resign. And it's it's that sort of um, braggadocio or whatever you want to call it that I think made people question whether the Lakers were truly stable and doing things the right way and for the right reason. And so if you if you kind of remove that um, that mindset, that mentality, that behavior, you do have the opportunity to shape yourself as a more credible organization, which is obviously something the Lakers are trying to do. And we saw this even last week. The Lakers were granted permission to speak to Ron Adams, the assistant in Golden State. Now, OK, how important are assistant coaches? Is that really as important as a, as a max free agent? I mean, of course not. But the Lakers have spent so much time 
hiring out of their own past or Jeannie Buss, you know, leaning so closely on her you know, closest friends. It was actually encouraging to see them make a move to try to go get somebody who is widely regarded as the most respected assistant in the NBA. They probably aren't going to get him. But to at least make that effort is a, a really encouraging sign from about the way they're thinking now. I don't know if that would have happened when Magic was still here. So what's realistic for the Lakers? And, and we all see these free agent lists, top five, top tens. What, in your opinion, is realistic based on their salary constraints, based on their needs? What would you view from a scale of Kawhi Leonard, Kevin Durant at the top of the pier? What would you view as realistic for the Lakers heading into free agency? I mean, I think, I think you know, Kevin Durant, absolutely not. Kawhi Leonard, 2% chance. I mean, that's you're, you're dreaming at that point. But Kyrie seems to be, be going elsewhere. But once you get beyond those guys, everything seems to be in play, whether it's you know, Kemba Walker, if, if, if he decide if he doesn't get the money he likes from from Charlotte, he's going to be a, he's going to be looking around. And there are options, obviously, whether it's New York, Boston, but then there's the Lakers. And Kemba Walker is a a bona fide all star point guard, um, an elite scorer um, and, and tr- could truly be that third star next to LeBron and, and Anthony Davis. Now, if you don't get that max tier guy, though. Mm-hmm. That's when you get into the D'Angelo Russell zone. And D'Angelo Russell probably makes the most sense of those guys who are in that 23 to $26 million range because that's where you have Nikola uh, Vucevic and Malcolm Brogdon. D'Angelo Russell is the guy who really feels like he could be on the move. And th- there's a lot of irony to that, obviously. I mean, I've, Magic Johnson shipped him out of town basically to um, – you basically send him to Brooklyn Nets finishing school <laughs> to potentially come back to the Lakers. But he has been... Um, he became an all-star in Brooklyn. Um, and when, I, when I talked to Magic about this two nights ago outside the NBA awards, he said he's more mature. Um, he, is a, he has become the leader that Magic questioned that he could be two years ago. Um, that makes a lot of sense. He's affordable, but he's not such a big star that you worry that he's, not go- that he's going to um, detract from what LeBron and AD have going on. And he also saves you a few dollars to spend in free agency. So all of that like kind of paves the way, I think, to a potential D'Angelo Russell reunion. But of course, that is predicated on the Nets having the summer they want and getting Kyrie Irving and, and potentially Kevin Durant also. But it's that's why all these pieces all affect everything else. It's a significant set of dominoes that you have to think are going to start falling pretty early on Sunday. So of the 24 or 28, depending on, on whether or not Anthony Davis uses the trade kicker right. here. 24, 28, usually about the, the amount of money that you see right. attached with the Lakers and free agency. Your opinion, your analysis, is, do you think they're better off spending that, the majority of that, on an individual or filling in a bunch of different pieces here? Maybe getting two different, three different players for that sum, or does it depend on who we're talking about player-wise? Well, I think, I think, I think, it's, I think it's that. It's, yeah. it's who it is. And, you know, either one of those could be successful, I think. Um, the problem is we've only seen Rob Palinka put together a roster once, and it was last summer when he ended up with Lance Stevenson, Rajon Rondo, JaVale McGee, and that just didn't work. And so there is this great unknown of did he learn a lesson there? Does he have a better sense of how to build a roster around LeBron, how to get the right pieces in place? If you're saying, great, here's $28 million, go split it up, and he doesn't put the right guys, well, then what, was, what, what good was it? And I happen to be in the camp that if you have that, if you have that max slot, Use it on the one guy. Get the best possible player you can. If you can get Kemba Walker, Jimmy Butler, D'Angelo Russell, you do it because then you at least secure. You have insurance against LeBron in decline, uh, whether it's his age or injury. We saw him have the most significant injury of his career last season. If you have Jimmy Butler and Anthony, or, and Anthony Davis and LeBron is, you know, for whatever reason, misses 30, 40 games, I believe that duo still gets you to the playoffs. And you need, the, again, going back to my earlier mm-hmm. point, you need this team to be as good as it possibly can be this year. You need it to make as deep of a run as it can to compel Anthony Davis to stay. And you don't want to be in a situation where you have surrounded Anthony Davis with a bunch of nice role players, but LeBron is not able to contribute at the level that you are anticipating right now. They miss the playoffs. LeBron is getting older. Anthony Davis doesn't have much faith in, in Rob Palinka or the Lakers starts taking meetings next July. You just cannot risk that. You have to do everything you can to lock him in right now and that is by making building a championship team and you do that with stars boy genie bus rob palenka even to one of your previous columns lebron james I mean, there's there's enough pressure to be spread around here in this organization where you're gonna have a lot of eyeballs and expectations from layer to layer to layer inside of this organization from top to management to 
player, yeah. right? To, I mean, because we all had associated LeBron with part of management when we saw that famous shot of him and Palinka and Magic when LeBron wasn't playing a game. So, you know, the three different layers, just trying to think about how involved – is Magic in any of this? Or, excuse me, how involved is LeBron in any of this? Well, they don't do any of this without LeBron James, right? You don't trade two former number two overall picks and a number four overall pick, two future firsts, and Josh Hart for Anthony Davis if that is your starting point. You you do it because you have LeBron James and you don't have any more time to waste. Like, you, you've, you can't mess around any longer. And so whether it's LeBron pulling the strings or not, they certainly are honoring his presence with the, with the move for AD. And you have to do that further with 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 the rest of the roster construction because if 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 you somehow don't maximize this window with lebron and you've traded those picks you've traded that young core it will go down as an all-time disaster in the history of this organization and and the nba and you and you just after the last six years they've had the detour they've taken from the top of the nba they can't afford they can't afford to continue that Last thing, uh, quickly, is, is just the Clipper factor here. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, I know you and I have talked enough over the years that, you know, there's always this dismissive attitude from Laker fans towards Clipper fans. And, and I don't deny that it still exists today. But do the Lakers, they're still the Lakers. Are they paying attention to what happens? You know, there's been a lot of chatter over the last couple of months about, well, you have the stable franchise. You have this role reversal, the stable franchise, and the Clippers with Balmer and the logo and Doc Rivers, and then you have this chaos over yeah. here. And, and if you want to play in Los Angeles, maybe it's time to rethink that. Are they paying attention to what's going on, or are they similar to their fans in that there is this dismissive attitude even to this day from the Lakers towards the Clippers? Uh, it's a little bit of both. I, th- I, think, I think there is still that Lakers hubris. You know, Why do the Clippers get um, so much praise when they haven't won anything yet? Well, and I think the answer is because you can see them, you can see them building, you see them trending in the right direction. The fact that they haven't been afraid to be bold and, and you know, trade um, their best players to create opportunities and bring back assets and, um, you know, build, frankly, the right way. And, and I think there is concern about market share and, and the Clippers taking advantage of the Lakers being, um, you know, outside of the playoffs. And obviously you had... You had the Lob City era, which did, which failed to really um, take off to the level that they obviously aspired. But if if the Clippers are able to get, let's say, Kawhi Leonard and um, you know, Kevin Durant thought to be still in the mix there, if they're able to really have the summer they want to have, um, and the Lakers don't put that third star around AD and LeBron James, it's not going to become a Clipper town. It's never going to become a sure. Clipper town. There's just two, we're generations away from that. There's just too much history, but. It, you could have a, a situation where you have the best team in the NBA in L.A. and it's not the Lakers. And that is something that, in my opinion, the Lakers are terrified of. We saw Jeannie Buss's emails in some great reporting from the L.A. Times earlier this year um, where she was very dismissive of Steve Ballmer and his aspirations of you know, building uh, you know, a Clipper-specific arena and really kind of expanding their footprint in Los Angeles, um, referring to him as balls. So I think that there is a real fear within the Lakers of – of the Clippers kind of coming for their town. Hey, good luck this weekend. I mean, with the family photos, obviously. Yeah, I I mean, I'm just having this image of you, middle of family photos, kids, wives, everything happening, and hey, sorry, I... I gotta gonna be, there's going to be like one photo on my wall, like blown up to like like real life size of, right. me, of, of like everybody smiling and me looking at my phone in you, horror. Uh, you tweeting. <laughs> yeah, that, that'll be the family photo for Bill Orm. Bill, we appreciate any Laker fan who's out there who wants to follow Bill's outstanding work. Do so at The Athletic. You can do it at Bill Orm on Twitter. And we thank you. Thanks for stopping by my, today. Appreciate it. Nice thank to meet you. you in person, by the way, after all those years of speaking on the telephone. Absolutely. We, I uh, enjoyed we it. We do appreciate that. Thank you very much. For more of The Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.